morning watercolour wizards this is our uh, fourth one <clears throat> our fourth episode and we're going to do these beautiful daffodils so as usual I've got my piece of <coughs> tracing paper here ready I'm resting it on a pad and this is my image daffodils so I'm going to do my usual thing of doing them in half and half again this is a basic way of forming a simple grid you know so that you can get your drawing down more easily if you if you wish i'm just going to reinforce those lines so it's easier for me to see the rough proportions of my image <clears throat> that sort of thing so there's that and similarly the creases I'm going to reinforce the creases in my tracing paper sheet so that it's easy to see okay so what I like to do is I like to put my image in a rigid it's quite a rigid plastic sleeve and then I prop it up then I lean it you know sort of like that against my bookshelf which you can't see but it's sort of on my table like that mm -hmm. and then I got everything I need to see to start to draw in so let's have a go I'm probably not going to talk now okay because I'm just thinking about my drawing Okay, we're ready to pick the colours now. So here I go. The colours I've got. Let's see which four I'm going to pick this time. Let's get my cover over there now. Okay, so any four. So one, two, three, four. What have I got? Oh my goodness me. Oh, whoops, I should have taken the, the white out. Okay, one more then. <laughs> Right. Okay. Ooh. Right, I'm going to zoom in and show you these. <sighs> so I've got Zoocyte Genuine. I've got to say I'm not inspired by these colours, but I'm going to do it. Raw Umber, Quinacridone Rose, and Cobalt Blue. Okay. Considering we've got to paint daffodils, it, it's sort of they feel quite counterintuitive. These four colours, I've got to be honest with you, because of course when we think daffodils, we think yellow and green, obviously, yes, and springtime. So I think the 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 daffodils I end up painting with these four are going to have quite a different mood. Let's get started. So a little bit of blue tack now. Ready to pop these <coughs> into my lid. Okay, 
so we're ready to roll now. So I've got that Cronacodon Rose, Cobalt Blue, Raw Ember and Zoocyte. And I'm going to write that down now because I nearly forgot what they were. Today as well is the first time that I'm actually going to use distilled water colour. Uh, sorry, distilled water. Um, in over 30 years of painting, I've never used distilled water, although I've read about it being used many times. One of my heroes, David Lyle Millard, <coughs> mentions using distilled water in which to stretch your watercolour paper in his book, More Joy of Watercolour. So I've got some distilled water today and I've got one jug, which is full of distilled water. That'll be my dipping jug. And then I've got one jug, which is just full of tap water, which would be my rinsing jug. So that's an economical way of using it. And then my water spray that I spray directly on my paints, you know, at any time. This is full of distilled water as well. So we'll see if it makes any difference. So first of all, no, let's get these down. Um, oh, Quinac Redone. Sorry, Quinac Redone Rose. And then the Cobalt Blue. Because when I come to write up this, I'll probably forget, you know, the, 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 the colours I use. Raw Umber. And zoocyte, and zoocyte is a, a natural earth pigment by Daniel Smith. It's basically a grade green. Okay, so let's take a little look at each of these colours now. <coughs> so zoom out a little bit. So I'm rinsing my brush, I'm rinsing my dirty brush in my normal tap water and then I'm giving it swill in my lovely distilled water and then I'm picking up my paint. So hopefully, you know, I'm giving my pigments the best chance for them to shine because there's no contaminants that there normally would be in tap water. That's the claim anyway. Contaminants could be fluoride, chlorine, uh, you know, sort of bleachy things, there could be all, all sorts of things in there. So there's my raw umber. I'm doing this on camera as much as anything is to test how true the colours are in real life with what I've got on my screen so I can adjust my colours, you know. Let me see if that's a bit better. That's a little bit truer, okay. So I'm just adjusting my camera settings so that it's as, as, as true as I can get it. And there's this zoocyte. So yes, I'm really uh, up against it now for these daffodils, aren't I? <laughs> I've really given myself a job. But the premise is that you can paint anything in any colour as long as you follow a readable tonal map. So <clears throat> we'll give it a go, OK? Have fun choosing your own four colours. Uh, so I've been a busy bee this t last week. Well, just after I've recovered after my chest infection. I bought some uh, £90 ash hot pressed 100% cotton rag paper. £90 paper is becoming more and more difficult to get. It equates to 200 GSM and it, or 185 GSM and it's the lightest paper and it looks to me like watercolour paper manufacturers throughout the world don't seem to be making it anymore. I've looked on the web for ages, couldn't find any. Finally found some in a shop in London called Corn Ellison. So this paper is um, £90 paper hot pressed. I've stretched it on my 9mm plywood board. Okay, and I stretched it using the distilled water. I had a, a tub and I filled the tub full of this distilled water. So this paper has had the best treatment that I've ever given to any watercolour paper in all the years I've been painting. So um, I'll see how it's going to go. I just wanted to see if you can sh show you can see. Um, can you see that there, the words, it's not showing up very well. See there, Arsh, can you just see that? It's not very really clear. <clears throat> That's the watermark down there. And I like showing the watermark. There's a lot of people who don't want it on their paintings, but I, I just like it on there. 
So now we're going to get our image down. Here's my daffodils that I drew onto the paper. Um, on, I drew onto the tracing paper before. And now it's just a case of centering them on the board. Just lining up those straight edges. Then I'm going to get a little tinsy wincy bit of masking tape. Just a little bit on there. Act as a little hinge. Just so when I come along now and put my trace down, don't forget there's a video link in how to make your own trace down. Lovely non-smudgy clean stuff that you can make at home in the description of this video below. Okay, so just stick it under there. Come along with a thin, very fine. And I use a red biro so I can see where I've been. And then start tracing. Let me start over here. I don't use too hard a pressure because you want to be able to rub these out possibly afterwards, you know, after you finish painting or during the painting process. That's, that's nice and thick. You probably can't see that. It's some in a bit. So that's thick enough, okay? So I'm going to go off camera while I trace the rest of this down. Right, so now we've got the tracing done. And what I'd like to do is just add in a few little leaf shapes because otherwise the stalks look to look a bit thick. For example, this looks like a stalk. Well, it isn't a stalk, it's actually a leaf. So if I indicate that by sort of having a bit of a leaf shape there, that tells us that's a leaf, okay? And over here, this one is very thick as well, isn't it? And we could indicate it coming through behind that daffodil head about there. Okay, so that just helps us read those as, as leaves. And this is actually the stalk, okay, for that daffodil. Good morning. So now we're ready to start on the daffodils. I've just rubbed out or rubbed down the lines of the leaves a little bit more so they're not so prominent, okay, because the daffodils are the thing. Um, I'm leaving the daffodil outlines quite clear only for the purposes of this tutorial because I want you to see where I'm painting. But if I wasn't doing it for a video, I would also rub those down a little bit more again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide which colour I'm going to paint the daffodils in. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to go for the rose. Okay, I know it's a bit radical. But when we go radical colours, we've got to do radical things. So first of all, I'm going to wet the whole inside of the daffodil with my clear, distilled, cold water. So I'll just go off camera while I do this, because it takes a while. <clears throat> and if you do the same. Just to say, I'm only wetting down to the cuff. There, so I'm not wet in this part for the moment. Okay, so now all of the daffodil has been wetted and it's got that sheen, as you can see, okay? Make sure that the tips are as moist as the centre of the daffodil. You want the whole sheen to be consistently moist all over. And then we're ready to put in our first lot of colour. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some of this quinacridone rose. <clears throat> Look at that beautiful colour. And a mix more than I think I need. So I've got a nice puddle of that. This will dry paler as well, okay? So let's get this on. All over the daffodil. Want to work quickly but accurately. This is putting more moisture into the flower as well, which is good, so it gives me more work in time. 
I'm using a size 4 brush to go right out to the tips of the rims of the daffodils, trumpet and all the areas, okay? Make sure you paint right out to there to get that lovely telltale shape, you know, the recognisable shape of the daffodil. And this paper is really lovely, this hot pressed Arche um, 90 pounds paper, 185 GSM or, or roughly 200 GSM thereabouts. Mm. Whoops! Oh, la, 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 la. oh, that was a bit of luck. <laughs> My picture dropped right on that then. Could have had a splat, but thankfully we didn't. Okay. I'm just out into these little tips now. These frilly, frilly, fluted bits. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to tip it around now and let just share the paint out. You can see that sheen there, can't you, all over, right? So just tip it about and let it have a run. See, it's all surging across the head of the flower there. And when it starts to pedal, you can either suck it up with a thirsty brush or you can just tip it again and let it share out a little bit more. It's got a lovely daffodil shape now in rows, which is a bit different to the, the normal yellow, isn't it? While I'm letting it sink in a bit more, because right now it's a bit too wet to start using a thirsty brush and lifting out the highlights which you'll see in your paint along pack uh, if you buy the paint along pack uh, through buy me a coffee the link is in the description below by the way you'll get this you'll get the outline tracing outline and you'll get the full reference photo etc okay and also you'll be helping fund me to do more of these videos okay so that would be very gratefully accepted if you do the donation via buy me a coffee. So I'm just waiting a bit longer for that to still sink in. It's still a bit shiny, still a bit wet. Okay. And this is the waiting game. Um, we want to let it have a sheen on it, but we don't not want to let it get damp. Because when it's damp, there's no sheen. And then if we start lifting out colour, we could cause a back run, okay? So while we're look, looking at that, here is the grey scale, back to it. And uh, some areas are practically white, aren't they? Almost as white as the background. You see these highlights on these petals? And some areas have got a soft grey, and then there's a darker grey. And finally, there's a few little touches of black, which is the sort of darkest accents there. All right, so I'm using this uh, grayscale as my guide now to start lifting out. I, I feel it's ready now for me to start lifting out. And quinacridone rose, this one sort of stains quite a lot, so you need to do the lifting quite well if you use if you're using the same colour as me quite soon. And start getting that colour out before it gets too comfortable on the paper. So I'm starting to form the petals a bit now with highlights. A bit of a highlight there. There's some striations down there on the trumpet of the daffodil and they are very pale so I'm going to get those in now and this tip really is the palest tip so every time I'm lifting some colour out I'm then going to my pot of distilled water rinsing it and then drying my 
brush on a flannel. By the way, don't use fabric softener on these because then what you're doing is rubbing fabric softener all over the hairs of your brushes. And I think that can over time sort of make them less absorbent and repel water and they won't suck up the water as I'm doing so well. <clears throat> I've got no proof of this, but it's just a feeling I've got. It sort of makes sense to me, so. We've got some nice subtle highlights there. If I'd started lifting a little bit sooner, I could have risked a back run, but I probably would have got a bit more pigment out. And there's quite a highlight here as well on the back of the daffodils neck there so there we go I've committed to a rosy batch of daffodil which is at least I've made that decision and I'll probably use the zoocyte and raw sienna in the leaves because they are very dark and then I'll be using the cobalt blue to help me make darks on the Daffodil, I'll try that. <clears throat> right, I don't want to keep going on anymore now. I'm just going to very quickly press in there to get that strong highlight and one there. And I'm going to leave that to dry naturally. One thing I would say is really make sure that this is, you know, dry, bone dry. And when you place that part of your thumb on there, after it's dried for a while, it shouldn't feel cool. Because if it feels cool, there's still residual moisture in this paper. Don't forget, if you're working with 100% cotton rag paper, it's going to absorb a heck of a lot more water than Barkingford ever could. And so it's deceptive. You think it's, you know, looking dry, surfacey. Um, and it might look and it might feel dry to the touch, but if it feels cool, there is still water in there, and the minute you go to put um, another wash on top, it'll all reactivate it and cause ugly back runs and blooms. If you don't want them there, they'll look ugly, obviously. But if you don't mind them there, then that's fine. But make sure it's bone dry. So the the secret touch is put a put your hand on there if it feels cool then it's still got some drying to do. So we can, you can either gently, you know, finish it off with a, a very gently hair dryer holding it high above, you know, and just give it a dry. At this stage now, when it's bone dry, usually in a house, I'd say at least half an hour, you know, if the room is fairly, you know, comfortable, warm, half an hour. It's very hard to give a time, but I'd say at least half an hour and then you can finish off with a little hair dryer just to be sure if you want to. And then there's less risk of scorching the paint because if you go in when the paint is soaking wet with a hair dryer, you can get quite an ugly scorched look on some pigments. At this point, I'm going to rub away any pencil lines I don't want. I like this part because it starts to feel more painterly rather than drawn. <clears throat> And we've got the outline established, so we know where we're going. Right. Okay, so if you don't mind now, I'm going to swivel my painting around because I, I want to work now um, <clears throat> in this direction. I like to work downwards because um, it's easier to put the paint on. Okay, so there's the neck and I'm going to be working downwards now, so I'm just going to swivel my setup around. So just to show you, this is how I'm working it. I've got my blossom here and my grey scale here, okay. So I'm working and using this as my road map, okay. So first of all, I'm going to take some of the rose, quinacridone rose. And I'm just going to paint those very uh, delicate sides. 
slightly darker in the grayscale areas. There's one there. And there's a bit of a grayed area there if you look at your grayscale. And that comes down about there and tapers away. And there are a few little scattered lines there. And a few little striations there as well. Then on this petal, there's a greyer, a darker area, and then it tapers away very finely. And this is just giving it a bit of texture and body. I'm just going to unify this by just continuing this patch of darker tone so that we can read that uh, daffodil more readily and then it's pale there okay <clears throat> now as we come in over here this is paler so I've got a darker area here and then there's a bit of a line and a bit of a I'll touch. So I'm just following the grayscale roughly, you know, I'm not going to be able to do it, well I could, I suppose do it exactly as it is, but I just need to suggest some light and dark changes to give some body and form to the daffodil. especially around those fluted areas there, okay? Now all of this area will have the darker pink on it because as you'll see there's a darker tone again, isn't there? There's a third grey. So everything on this part of the petal, uh, of the floret, sorry, will be in this undercoat of this pink. Maybe you can leave the odd little, no, let's do it all, do it all that one pink, okay? And then we're going to go darker straight away with some of this pink again and a touch of my manganese blue. So there's the pink and a touch of the manganese blue, sorry cobalt blue, a bit more of the pink. <clears throat> I want it to be darker but I don't want it to be shouting out, oops that's way too dark. Right? If I've gone way too dark I just have to move away to another part of the palette and add more water to it. Now I need to go quickly. get this darker area on. Again following where it's this dark on the grey scale. And areas that you don't paint in this colour will just, you know, they'll, they'll be bled in too softly because we're working wet into wet. And that's all I want is some soft blends. There's a darker touch there, isn't there, on that part of the petal. Maybe a line there. There we are. That's it. Okay, so that's so far there. Now, this petal here is very dark at the start. 
and it actually has some darker, the, the darkest grey going into this adjoining uh, adjacent petal as well. So I'm just going to put a few little echoes of that colour there. Now for this one, I'm going to go like that, rinse my brush really well and flick it and then I'm going to moisten this area here and blend that in. Start from the base and blend it out like that. Start from the base so that you don't get any back runs and blend it into that sort of oval it's coming in an oval shape on the grey scale. And then there's a little bit more of that dark around the tip. But there's a little nice little white patch here. If you look at your grey scale, isn't there? Which we don't want to lose. That one. Okay, so that's that petal. Now the last petal is mostly um, this dark grey again. We can put all the colour on. The little swathe of grey there and then it goes into the dark one really dark at the tip so what we'll do is do a little bit of a straddle with a moist brush just to get those two areas to blend so I'm going to rinse my brush now flick it really well but don't dry it on a flannel and then moisten the area in the middle and then touch into those surrounding areas and go right back to the neck so that equal moisture is being put on all parts of the petal then you won't get any ugly back runs and there's and then there's a cut through actually there's a cut through like that again start that at the neck and bring it all the way through to the tip there's a bit of jagged striation there okay so there's our first daffodil okie dokie what we might do is go back and darken any areas we feel needed to push this front petal forward because I'm not reading it as clearly as I'd like to but I'm not going to go in there now because it's all still drying so we'll leave it until it's bone dry and then we can make that correction time for a cup of tea right it's been a couple of days since I've actually been working on this painting so I'm eager to get back to it because I'm really excited by the colour of these daffodils. <clears throat> so what I'd like to do now is get some of the stalks in and see how the stalks look. So for that I'm going to wet the stalks. So colours, I fancy putting in some of this raw sienna now. So I'll put some raw sienna Mixed with some zoocyte and the zoocyte and raw sienna are going to give me a, a dulled green as it happens. Okay so I'm going to pick up some raw sienna and drop that in. To this area and now I'm going to go and look at my grayscale and see what's happening with the tones on the grayscale and you can see that's a darker tone that's very dark that's pale this is a lot paler isn't it with some little gray patches and some dark patches so I'm going to use that 
bit of zoocyte, bit of raw sienna to just add some little darker areas in contrast mostly underneath usually on things that are sunlit from above like plants and flowers well anything really that's outside you're going to have shadow underneath I want to go a bit darker here for this shadow Again, using my grayscale, if it suits me, to follow that tonal pattern. Much stronger again on the underside of that stalk. That's all dark, that one uh, leaf there. <clears throat> I'm practically using neat zoocyte here to get these little sort of folds and things that are on that skin that wraps around the back of the daffodil. <clears throat> I'm going to go darker again with that zoocyte much less water, much more pigment. Really get that contrast. And this puts the light on, you know, uh, in, in the sunlit areas. When you do a real strong dark, it helps show up the light in other areas. Right, once again, if you don't mind, I've turned the painting around because I want to work one more time on the daffodil. I feel like the head isn't as readable as it could be because my drawing isn't exactly as the same as the reference photo. And so where I've placed the darks isn't really pushing this petal forward enough. You see, it's sort of lost. And I don't mind some lost edges, but this really isn't... Uh, that isn't clear enough for me. So I'm going to use some more of the um, quinacridone rose and I'm going to pop that extra dark part in to push this. I'm using a little bit of artistic license here to push that bit of the petal forward and again go darker in where the trumpet really goes into the flower there and darken it and I feel that reads a lot better. I could also have some more just around where the tip of that flower is and then take them away. Now I'm rinsing my brush, flicking it on the side of my jug and I'm going to blend those marks out that I've just put on. Rinse, flick each time you do some blending so that you've got enough moisture in the brush to carry the blend away from the main passages of colour. Okay, I'm, I'm much happier with that daffodil now. Yeah, I think that's reading much better now. Okay, so at this point I've done a daffodil floret and I've done the leaves. Now what I'm going to be doing is repeating that process in these other two daffodils. So in order, for, in order to not make this a very, very long video, I'm going to go on to speed camera and I won't be talking in order to do this one here, okay?
Okay, so here we have the bloom done. <clears throat> I'm going to let it dry naturally and then everything would be ready for us to do the next phase when we start putting in some darker tones. Okay, so now I'm going to do the third daffodil in the same way. I've wet it all. Right, let's move on now to the next flower. These are bone dry and we need to get them uh, with some foam now, okay? So for this, I'm going to wet each petal and then I will be dropping in some darker tone as per the gray scale. But if I feel that the tonal gray scale that I've got doesn't deliver um, the form that I need, then I can make some artistic license uh, changes. Okay, the, the grayscale is great as long as it gives you what you want. For example, this one gives me more or less everything I want here. I can see the flower quite well. But this one, there's um, the trumpet is not quite so well defined because it's very close in tone to some of the background petals. So I might want to push the darks there to push that trumpet forward and push the darks there to push it forward. You see, so you use it as a roadmap, but please feel free to make any little tweaks you feel you need to in order to succeed. Right, so moving on to the trumpet now, let's get a bit of work done on that. So again, I'm going to wet the whole inside of the trumpet. By the way, when I was wetting the petals, um, and the one next door was wet and I painted next door to it, I made sure there was about a millimetre of dry paper in between the, trump uh, the, the, the petals so that the previous watercolour wouldn't bleed into the one next to it, okay? i just give it a tiny little bit of room so that I didn't have any bleeds where I didn't want them.
Right, how have you done on that? Again, there's no right or wrong, it's just what you feel looks like a daffodil, okay? Now, what I'd like us to do is to focus now simply on the inside of the throat. That m much stronger shadow then. Rinse your brush and flick it and let that blend over. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out now. I don't want to overdo these daffodils. You could spend more time if you wanted adding some stronger tones uh, on these one, two, three, four petals and just, you know blend them out a bit more that would give them more push to the this sort of expanding and folding out of the petals but this has to be a doable time for the tutorial for you all so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to put in the stalks All right, leaves are all in. I've left them quite loose. I haven't done a lot of detail there. So now what I want us to do is break into that cobalt blue and use it more throughout the painting because I've used it, but I haven't used it a lot. Now what I'm going to do is mix up a very gentle glaze. So a glaze is a, a mixture where you can practically where you can practically see um, the colour of the palette, you know, the weight of the palette through the mixture. So that means, can you see, it's, it's, you know, it's very pale, isn't it? Okay, you can practically see the weight of the palette through. So what I'm going to do now is be very brave and give some of my daffs a touch of blue. Okay, and I'm now going to call that watercolour wizard done. So that was really enjoyable painting those daffodils in unusual colours. Um, mostly the florets were unusual, the rest of the painting, you know, ended up being sort of greenish and whatever. But it made me work differently, it keeps me on my toes, and I hope it gave you a lot of enjoyment in painting maybe something different than pink, different than yellow, who knows what you've painted. We'll soon see when, when we uh, see what's coming up in the Google Gallery. So thanks very much for watching. Again, if you want to buy the paint along pack to go along with this, which also is a key to having your work in the Google Gallery with a chance of critique, three people will be critiqued at the end of every month for only the cost of £4, which I think is a pretty good deal. Okay, so if you want to do that, click the link in the description of the video and it'll take you to my Buy Me A Coffee shop and you can get the Paint Along pack there with everything you need, the outlines, the grayscales, the reference uh, image and materials I've used, etc. Plus, um, you'll also get the chance to see, talk with other people, you know, see what they've uploaded and be inspired, hopefully, to try 
more wizardly colours instead of the usual orthodox colours. If you'd like to like this video that would be great, plus any comments would be fantastic and if you subscribe too I'd be very grateful. So thanks very much for watching, I'm Alison Fenn on The Pottery and Artist and I'll see you in the next Watercolour Wizard. Bye for now.